This is an introduction to palladium cross-coupling reactions. It's a type of chemical reaction that allows you to form sp2, sp2 carbon bonds in a way that wasn't previously possible. So we're going to start with an example. The Suzuki coupling. So the Suzuki coupling, you can take a aryl bromide or an sp2 bromide, or actually more generally any carbon bromine bond that doesn't have a hydrogen on the beta carbon and we'll see why later on in the video or maybe in a later video. So we can take that and we can take another aryl boronic acid. So this case benzene with boronic acid. So that's a boronic acid there. And we can transform that using palladium zero and some ligands. And we can create a coupling of those two aromatic rings. Now, if you think about all the other organic chemistry you know, there aren't very many ways of making bonds directly from one aromatic ring to another aromatic ring. There is, if you go back looking, the Ullman coupling, but it doesn't work very well and it works in very specific cases. And you can't make these two things different. And that's what's particularly useful about this, is that the conditions are mild and we can put different substituents onto this. So supposing we did it with uh, the meta methyl, then we could make that. Or we could do this with uh, different substituents. We can make that the methoxy and we would end up with that in our final product. So whatever starting materials we choose, we can cross coupling, do this cross coupling. The scope is really wide and really useful. So there's a few things. We're gonna have a look at the mechanism and then we're gonna think about this coupling partner here. And we're gonna think about the limits of this coupling partner here. But that's the general synopsis of palladium uh, cross couplings. You take two coupling partners, one which is usually an aryl halide or a vinyl halide, and one of which has a metal or pseudo metal uh, attached to a carbon. And the catalytic cycle, palladium inserts, uh, oxidative insertion, transmetallation, reductive elimination, and ultimately you get this here. So let's have a look at the catalytic cycle for this. So it starts off with palladium zero. And if we're being particular, then let's look at a, an example. So one uh, very common ligand that's used is triphenylphosphine. And you can buy palladium uh, tetricus uh, triphenylphosphine. And this is a palladium with four triphenylphosphine ligands attached to it. You can buy it as a bright yellow powder. And if you think about this species here, it's actually got 18 electrons. So it itself is not going to be reactive. Uh, if you were to count up the electrons, full outer shell, uh, all the d orbitals full, no reactivity. But in fact, those ligands can dissociate and one can dissociate and then a second can dissociate. So that's gonna be an equilibrium. One and you'll have palladium Still zero because they're coordinating, they're not uh, no net gain or loss of electrons for the palladium. So palladium with three ligands, and of course, then you can have palladium with two ligands, always in the zero oxidation state. You can, of course, reduce palladium two in situ. There's lots of different variations, but this is fundamentally where we're going to start with our palladium zero with two ligands attached. And the first thing that it is going to do is oxidatively insert into a carbon halogen bond. So this kind of step you have undoubtedly seen before. If you've ever seen a Grignard reagent, um, you'll know that if you have a carbon halogen bond like that, then if you have a metal that's willing to give its electrons away, it will happily insert into this bond. Now palladium is not as electropositive magnesium by any stretch of the imagination, but it will still insert into this bond and when it does, we now have a carbon palladium, palladium bromine, and we still have our ligands attached. They are in this case triphenylphosphine, but there's an enormous range of ligands that we could possibly use. So the next step, well, it depends on the particular reaction, but if we're gonna do it generally, 
then rather than talking about the Suzuki reaction which I used above, we're just going to have another coupling partner that has a metal. And I'm going to talk about that just as a gener generic or general metal because it doesn't have to be boron, it could be magnesium, it could be a Grignard reagent, it could be uh, silicon, tin, zirconium, copper. There is a huge range of different metals you can do this for. The really common ones are boronic acid and tin. So what will happen here is that you get transmetallation. This carbon metal bond will exchange with that carbon metal bond and this bromine will leave and you'll form a new, car or a new metal halogen uh, bond. So in this case we'll end up with our metal bromide and the palladium now is going to be coordinated to both of those aromatic rings. It still has its two ligands. In order for this to uh, undergo the last step which is reductive elimination they are going to have to be uh, cis to each other. So this is going to have to undergo some isomerization before the last step which is reductive elimination occurs. I'm not going to draw that in though because this is just very much an outline of what happens. This undergoes reductive elimination. And so now that if you think about this the palladium is reduced. Here it's palladium 2. Here it got oxidized to palladium 2. Here it's still palladium 2. And now it's been reduced uh, reductive elimination back to palladium 0. So you could write these out as one, two, three reactions in a row, but because the palladium is a central part of this and it's a catalytic cycle and we regenerate our palladium zero, it's much more commonly drawn out as a cycle where your carbon um, your carbon halogen bond uh, comes in and then you get transmetallation and then you get reductive elimination. So oxidative insertion Uh, transmetallation and reductive elimination. This is the overview. There are a huge range, as I was saying, of different uh, reactions to which this applies. Each of them has its pros and its cons. So some like the Suzuki coupling are really uh, widely used but sometimes there are issues with reactivity um, or sometimes it's just easier to use some other coupling partner. So we'll take a look at some of these things in future videos but that's all for now. If you have any questions post them below or on Moodle or send me an email. Thanks, bye.